and thanks for joining us here at Show Studio, where we've got the first of our Couture Live panels. I'm Rebecca Gonzalez, I'm your host for this morning, um, and we're going to be discussing Schiaparelli Couture. And with me are these esteemed guests. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, my name is Pat, and I'm a designer. Um, I'm Deborah Milner, I'm a couture designer, and I also was instrumental in, um, well, working with McQueen on their couture. I'm Caitlin Price, and I'm a women's wear designer from London. I'm Lucy, and I'm a stylist. Great. So, um, I guess the first thing to talk about is the fact that it's the couture shows again already. Um, I'm guessing that none of us, maybe Deborah, you obviously are very knowledgeable about the process of couture, but perhaps you're not a couture customer yourself from no. the designers. I don't think, I mean, personally, as a journalist, it, it doesn't quite stretch to a couture gown, no. but it's interesting that um, the market for couture is actually growing. Um, in 2000, Cathy Horan wrote a piece for the New York Times in which um, she, was, she got a couture suit made on their budget, which is amazing. Um, and she estimated there were a 1,000 couture clients in the world, and now it's estimated there's 4,000 couture clients. And I suppose that's because we have seen a rise of kind of, is it the third centre billionaire was announced last week, and there has been an explosion in that upper echelon of wealth. Um, just because we don't necessarily know them personally, we kind of know, we have an idea, a glimpse of their lives. Um, and that, well, while couture is relevant to them for their shopping, it's relevant to us for other reasons. Do you guys think that couture is relevant today? Lucy, what do you think? Um, from a styling perspective, couture is a bit of a tricky one because of the money involved in it. It's very kind of sales driven. You know, these are made to be either seen or bought, not styled, and it mm. loses the kind of uniqueness and the special qualities if you're seeing it in editorial after editorial, which I guess is a great thing as well. And that's what mm -hmm. makes it so not unattainable, but so glamorous and yeah. luxurious. Um, but when it does, it's gorgeous. And I think it's interesting for, to look behind the legacy and the story and the fantasy behind couture. Mm -hmm. I suppose with couture shoots, they always kind of seem to be of a nature and that is very fantastical and yeah. also each image has its own personality because the house personality is so important but what would you say are the key issues when have you styled a couture shoot yourself yeah uh -huh. and how, how did how were the houses how did they respond to it? Was it easy? Was it the most complicated shoot you've ever done? Probably up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just the delicacy of everything. And it's not only the pieces, but it's a preservation of like a house legacy and a collection, so to speak. So that carries an additional weight in itself, but also it produces, it does produce these fantastical images mm. that you wouldn't necessarily want to see it in a multi-brand shoot or in, you know, like, for example, in a festival appearance, you want it to be a kind of top tier, um, say, some, you're styling someone wearing it, you want it to be a person who really resonates within the house mm -hmm. and embodies what the mm -hmm. collection represents. And did the well. pieces come with bodyguards in the way that high jewellery often does? House dependent, but yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and did you feel under pressure to create imagery that was fitting or did you feel that you could still be creative and true to yourself um that's quite a good one i think that i wouldn't want to work with a house that didn't kind of work with me and likewise i don't i think there's a heavy kind of production involvement from mm -hmm. how couture houses mm -hmm. and so it should be as well i think yeah it's a respect thing mm -hmm. Uh, so, Deborah, perhaps you could enlighten us a bit more about the process of couture yeah. and how garments are made, because there's a certain amount of, to be on the Paris haute couture schedule, there's a certain amount of um, restrictions that are in place. Do you, could you tell us a bit more about those? Well, I mean, I probably don't know all the restrictions in Paris couture, simply since I don't work in Paris, mm. but obviously there are 
you know, in terms of the teams, they have to have a certain number of teams, they have to produce a certain number of looks to actually be accepted by the Chambre mm -hmm. Syndical. But that does change, you know, because they have people who are invited. In terms of the process of actually making the pieces, there's obviously an enormous amount of handwork and all the pieces are fitted generally to the models, mm -hmm. which, and I know they are in ready to wear as well because you will check who's going to wear what and whether it looks good. But when you're talking about a dress that might be, you know, hand appliqued at the seams with sequins where it all matches up, mm. if that model then is slightly different, you have to change that. That's a big, big job. Yeah. So. And so your experience of working with McQueen on Couture, what, what was that like? Um, well, probably just like I'm explaining, and a lot the last few you know days before the collection, mm -hmm. then obviously there are a lot of changes and things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. But um, um, generally, it's just a very more a much more labour intensive work. And then you're you know if you're making something for a client, then you've got to from day one look at them, see what's going to fit them, what's going to suit them, and then tailor everything towards that while um, it's still preserving the look of the house. Yeah, so how much does the sample, say, change once it's become a, a piece that's been bought by a client? Well, it could change a lot because, I mean, there's two things. On the one hand, there's the, you know, the view of the house, which mm -hmm. you have to preserve. But on the other, you've got to look at their figure, what's going to suit them, and they all have personal tastes and also want to be involved in the making, in a sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of what they're paying for. And as I say that, the other side of it is that there are also a lot of couture clients now who don't want fittings, right? which is a complete nightmare because it's the sort of the opposite mm. of what couture is. Yeah. So, so how does that work? You almost have to be like a magician, Just get the measurements right, yeah. pad the stand correctly, which can take between three hours and a day, but that's just one process. And then, you know, it's really, that's a matter of your wits and, and sort of skill to get it right and hope there aren't too many alterations. Mm. But uh, it's a bit of a minefield, that one. And are there clients that are generally loyal to a brand and will return season after season? Well, I think, I don't know how that might be changing now, but I think generally, yes. And then they might change or add but I think most of the clients tend to go to two or three brands. Mm -hmm. So they might have one that's their kind of go-to for, I don't know, every day or suits, not every day, but suits and things like that. Mm. And then for very special occasions, they might think they're going to choose somebody else. But I realise that that demographic's changing, so I don't know how that's going to yeah. work going forward. Mm. And Caitlin, as a women's wear designer, how relevant do you find couture? I find it... I, I think it's very important to still have the couture shows, especially now looking at trends of ready to wear and how it's become so accessible to everybody. You know, the kind of streetwear trends that have filtered through to ready wear, ready to wear. Um, I think it's really important to, like Lucy said, to preserve the legacy of the houses and that craftsmanship, and you know the, the skill involved in making each piece. And while they may not be um, you know, such a wide client base for it. I think in terms of demonstrating, uh, Sorry. you know, the traditional skill and craftsmanship, it's very important, mm. I think. Especially now where everything is so kind of disposable. I, I love looking at couture shows. It's mm. like my favourite thing to look at, really. And do you get inspired yeah, in your absolutely. own way? Absolutely, yeah. A lot of my, um, although they are tracksuits and dresses, that. Um, hand embellished, hand embroidered, um, and it's because of my love for couture that, that those things have filtered through to, you know, a way of making something more special, a way of mm -hmm. transforming something it could be quite an ordinary garment into something more precious. Mm. I think, especially now, looking at the way we, the fast fashion and everything, just, and, you know, to look at those pieces on a runway or in an exhibition space, they, they last forever. Yeah. And to, if you owned one of those pieces, it would last forever. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. something so special in that. And it's not, I, I'm finding it very relevant. Mm. It's interesting because there's an argument that it is quite a sustainable way mm. of buying because obviously if you have that budget, because it's something that is <coughs> for you, it's in a way, it, in a way it's trend driven, but not in the way of ready to wear. So it's something that you might, you might wear once and then two seasons later, you might bring it out again and again and again. 
and it's something that's probably going to accompany you through the special moments of your life. There's a real romance to it, I think. Um, obviously, it is of the finest materials and there's so much innovation in the textiles and the craftsmanship and yet there's so much tradition in there as well that it's it must be just a very emotional thing to wear. Per, how does it affect your daily life or your, your fashion <laughs> journey? Is it something that you were interested in when you were studying? Um, I think sort of from a designer perspective I'm, I guess I'm drawn to the fantasy and, and I, I liked what was sort of highlighted in the press release as well, that mm -hmm. this relationship between the designer and the wearer and the meeting uh, within the fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess from that perspective, um, that's kind of why I'm drawn to couture. Um, and then obviously, um, sort of from a customer perspective, uh, there's different types of customers and, mm -hmm. and this is one customer and I think that's, another reason why couture is relevant, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, the fantasy is for me. Yeah. And, uh, I can be drawn to also very, very sort of low-end things as well. I don't really separate it in mm -hmm. that, that sense, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so this show today, uh, it's Daniel Roseberry's first collection for the house. He came from Tom Brown, which seems like quite a good fit because obviously Tom Brown is very... Uh, subversive, surrealist, uh, and there's something quite intelligent about that design house, which resonates well with the Schiaparelli heritage. Do you, is this what you were expecting from, we've watched the show already, um, we've got some pictures on the screen, but what is this what you guys were expecting to see? Uh, from Daniel, or did you not have a huge amount of expectation? Deborah, what do you think? Well, I, obviously he's, I, I, in terms of Tom Brown, I think it sounds like a very good fit, but obviously mm. we don't know where he was going to take it because mm. he's an individual with his own ideas, yeah. his own, um, you know, position. But um, I like the fact that he's decided, you know, that he's sort of influenced and working with modern, artists and sculptures rather than looking back to the past which I think was something Nick commented on that he felt it would be great if designers would really pick up that pattern mm. and work mm. with the yeah. current artists and designers. And I so think Vanessa that. Freeman from the New York Times wrote that apparently he was the only designer who didn't show a lobster dress or lobster inspired <laughs> look in his audition which I think <laughs> that's, that's is that's amazing. Exactly it. It's the idea of you know thinking about what, what is the now? ethos and the spirit of the mm. house and then finding a modern way because you, otherwise you're just a pastiche of the past mm. and there's no point. Well, I think um, uh, Schiaparelli herself uh, working with a lot of surrealists and being inspired by nature, uh, they talk about Artico in the press release, yeah. which is also take on nature in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I think for me that I expected something about nature and I think this feels like a quite fresh way to approach nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels a bit like it's got a few of the kind of dark theatre notes of Tom Brown's mm -hmm. in a little bit as well, which I love. Yeah. It's a lot darker than the last collection. It is. Well. It's a lot more, well, apart from the closing looks, perhaps it's a lot more restrained in a way. Yeah. It's, more, it's a bit more elegant. I think if you, if you look at the last collection, it almost looks like Gucci, mm. the yeah. Alessandro Michele look. Um, it was full of colour and it was full of volume and kind of that kookiness, mm. um, which it's, it's true to the Schiaparelli design heritage, <clears throat> but I think it's a bit played out. And this is, I think, an alternative view uh, that, that seems to be quite fitting for now. Um, what did you think about the dark colour palette? I, I like the considering color it's a spring I, I summer it collection. I find it a bit heavy-handed. I like the I like the color palette. Mm. Is it spring I, summer? Is it autumn it's winter? It's autumn winter. Uh, it's autumn winter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's in July. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course. So it's autumn winter. That's fine. Um, but still, what do you think of the color palette, Caitlin? I think maybe it's more the fabrication that I'm having an issue with. I find it a bit. Um, there's not quite for me enough kind of correlation between the looks, and I find the I think it's the beginning section with the tailoring, the fabrication. Mm. Although I know he's, they explored like treatments with the silks and stuff like that, which is interesting. But I think I would have liked to have seen a bit more of the, like I like that delicate 
that kind of um, embroidered with the... The net. Like the sort of, yeah, the looks like a net, netted dress. Yeah, that's dress. Right, yeah. actually. I love that, and I think, I, to me, that seems more true to Scaparelli mm. rather than the silhouette work doesn't... Mm -hmm. I don't find that so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, yeah, I think I like the more embellished. Yeah. If you look at look one as well, if it wasn't for the head jewellery, mm -hmm. then the jewellery like, wouldn't resonate so much yeah. with the house in itself. As yeah. Well. I mean, if you take that to one of the looks from last season, while she's totally stepped in in a new position and yeah. doing his own thing, I think that is such a stark contrast. I like look three, that navy blue, mm. Mm. Yeah, um, okay. single breasted jacket. I feel yeah. like that feels like the what it should be, that direction, mm. those yeah. pieces. Should we watch the video? Should we yes, because I haven't it? seen the yeah. beginning yet. So I feel beginning. like I'm. Change the logo slightly. Probably take him a while to get into the stride of it anyway. Mm. You know. Yeah. How long do you think? Yeah. How long do you think he'll be given? Well, you would hope four seasons. Because mm. I don't. I, I don't hey, really... he's on stage. So Deborah, you missed the beginning. So yeah. this is the designer. This is Daniel oh, sitting at, at his uh, desk. That's a really nice idea. Yeah. yeah. I think that's lovely. I think that adds to the personal touches of couture and it mm. is the intimacy with the designer to and ultimate client. Do they show what he's drawing? Does that come up at all or is it? Um, I didn't see, maybe they showed it at the end, but I didn't see. And what do you think of the staging? It's very stark and cinematic. Mm. There's, there's been quite a few shows with that mirrored catwalk. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think Recently. in terms of how he's talking works. about going from day to night to dream scape, mm. then that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's interesting having such a focal point almost on him, in, centred to the catwalk, rather than him being on a side piece as quite an anonymous designer coming yeah. into the house. It being such a sudden, mm -hmm. all eyes, not all eyes on yeah. me, but... No, it's, it is an interesting proposition. It's stepping out the shadows. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful, that one. I think the jewellery is the best part of the whole thing. Because mm -hmm. it really captures the, it's like the, the wit and the surreal, the mm. sort of sense of surrealism. Yeah. With it that I think it... <laughs> Lace is beautiful. Mm. What do you think it's about all the... the watch there. Mm. Was it a watch? It looks like a clock, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, what do you think <laughs> about the sort of the bonnet swimming caps and the, mm. the lace, the nude <laughs> lace? He was inspired by this artist, it said in a press release, who stuffed... So maybe it's kind of a hint to that, perhaps, mm -hmm. in the style. And then Marie Chai styled it. He's exploring the identity of women, isn't he, and womanhood. Mm. That's nice, Feminine the way she's got the beading on the back of her head. If it comes back in a minute. Is that elegant? That's great, that outfit. Mm. Casting is really strong. Mm. Casting's amazing, especially for couture as well. Mm. It's normally quiet whitewashed. Yeah. Do you think there's a sexiness to the clothes? Um, I think you've also yeah, been yeah. that for sure, definitely. I think to have an ease as well. Mm -hmm. We talked about also in the sort of nature of Schiaparelli not to um, singe the body or like using corsets so much. Uh, he's kind of picking up on that, I think. I love right. Don't you find that quite Tom Brown then? Yeah. You can see the Tom Brown. Yes. Comes yeah. I think on that. And actually, when you think about Tom Brown, how his shows have become, they're so much about the performance, yeah. and this is so restrained. Mm. 
in a way. It's like he has learnt lessons from his time there, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily things that he wants to replicate. Mm. He is making a stand for himself. But it is a very strong staging. Yes. Because yeah. I think it's quite dramatic. It's There's very, yeah. lighting. There's very much a sense and... of drama in there. Yeah. yeah. There's an intimacy as well with the lighting. Yeah. Mm. And a modernity. Mm. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? The python. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That dress is really good, I think. And the thing is, there's a sexuality, but it isn't kind. It doesn't feel. Um, it feels empowering. It doesn't mm. feel like burlesque sexuality mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that. Not yeah. that's not for some people, but mm. um, it was quite dark and lifting. And when it comes to the House of Schiaparelli, how important is it? Do you think to a fashion consumer. Obviously, a couture consumer is completely different to someone who maybe just reads fashion magazines or follows certain designers on Instagram. But do, do you find that kind of younger people know about the house? It's only been restored in the last, what was it, about 10 years ago or maybe... Well, they might not, but if you think that they do know about, you know, what, you know Chanel or some mm. of those other houses, I think people will know about it yeah if they see the pieces on celebrities yeah. and you know but it just doesn't have the same branding machine behind it in the way that chanel dior do where they're obviously they're much faster businesses and they're pushed out in so many different mm. ways and maybe that's the beauty of it too do you think that's what I appeals that's to need control way yeah really because it's not this machine mm -hmm. that ready to wear seems to be mm -hmm. really yeah you know, there's no slowing down and it is such a kind of vacuum a little bit of instagram and show mm -hmm. and people whereas this is labor and research and referencing and history i think scaparelli has always been slightly on the outside of fashion anyway mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense that it's not as mainstream as some of the yeah. other you know, they're not doing perfumes and... No. Yeah. I did really like the quote, which probably is very relevant because we've just done a mega, almost all night of finishing a piece, which said that Schiaparelli really loved working with artists, I'm paraphrasing mm. it, and um, doing something in the realm of fantasy because it took you away from the everyday boring reality. I know, mm. I, I picked and up I'm on sorry, that. I'm sorry, but as a designer, that is so true. Yeah. Mm. I don't mean, you know, it is... It's, of course, it's exciting when you're designing something new and coming up with a new concept, but the everyday reality of sitting and sewing and making mm. the patterns and doing everything, mm -hmm. there is an element of that which is quite boring and monotonous, yeah. but you have to do it to get to the result. Mm -hmm. I'm sure artists would say there's elements of their work which is yeah. monotonous too. But I think that's why also the fantasy and the idea that you're creating something that's more than just a piece of clothing mm -hmm. makes that all kind of worthwhile. Yeah. And then hopefully you're inspiring people and, you know, showing possibilities. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can't all buy them. I mean, I can't buy them. We don't make things for me, even though we could make anything, but we don't because yeah. we don't have time. And it's uh, the sheer cost of it. Mm. It doesn't make me feel mm. that it's not worth doing just because yeah. I can't wear them. And so you obviously are busy. Have you found that your business has changed in the last few years? Well, yes, because I kind of relaunched in 2016 when I left McQueen. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's changed from before that. And I think there is a younger clientele coming through, which is interesting. Mm. want something more interesting, <coughs> exciting. I also think, just thinking about the whole styling thing, and I hope that magazines and stylists are able to do it, but I know it's a different time now in terms of what magazines are demanding. But, you know, someone like Isabella Blow, she would mix up all sorts mm. of things from different designers together yeah. in a look and create her own mm. image. Mm -hmm. And in those days, the houses weren't upset that she'd mix this with no. that because mm. she came up with something that was really exciting. Mm -hmm. So mm. I realise that there are advertising pressures and things yes. that stop that. But I think, you know, you should be able to and I know, I know it's not always the stylist choice, but put a couture jacket mm. with a pair of trainers mm. and mm -hmm. leggings or, you know, tracksuit to make it more relevant and yeah. interesting. Mm. And then someone might think, oh, I could, you know, I'll customise my denim jacket and stick mm -hmm. some stuff on it here or paint on the back with my yeah. poster paints. 
and I can get That's that kind of image. That's the excitement of fashion, isn't it? Yeah. And being able to interpret it and take something from mm. high and low. And yes. Like, that's, that's when and the funnest the, images are made. One, yes. one look policy for shooting mm. is so restrictive. Yeah. And why, oh, it's, yeah, it looks like you're flicking through a Ad pages, and designers yeah. then feed back from mm. the stylist, you know, you think, oh, that looks good with that, didn't think yeah. about yeah. that. Okay, let's try something like that. So it becomes a really interactive, yeah. exciting... Mm. Yeah. And as a designer, you used to look through magazines and that would mm. feed into your, your inspiration, but now yeah. it's... Mm. Yeah, it's true, not, mm. because not sometimes... The same. You... There's not that kind of reciprocal energy between yeah. designer and stylist. Yeah. You've got Do you find like, that now? Yeah, totally, because you've got advertiser priorities, you've got full look policies, you've mm. got, particularly mm. with couture, it'll have to be all that house story. Oh yeah. So yeah. it's very much a linear process, whereas you can't just pull in everything from mm. everyone and see what happens on a rail and a model. That's really interesting, because you know when you said what's changed, and I know I'm going slightly off piste here, but the biggest thing that I found difficult is that when I started out, I had someone like Isabella Blow who'd say, oh, I'm doing a piece for Italian Vogue, mm -hmm. and it's all kind of, and she'd give you some really obscure kind of quote, and can you make something? And then you'd say, well, yes. And then you'd be in a big panic because you didn't have any money. <laughs> and then you'd sort of look around and find, I don't know, loads of old net and applicate all together and make something, but trying to please her, but not really knowing what you were doing. But that was an incredibly creative process. Mm. Yes. And to be part of that. <coughs> but I love really those projects. That's my favourite thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't get, well, I'm obviously, maybe I'm not tapped into the same people nowadays, but I don't get those opportunities in the same way. Mm. And I don't know if that's mm. also. It's what's been lost in fashion, really, yeah. I think, now. And it's why the way the industry kind of is the way it is. Mm. And do you think. Sort of DIY. Yeah. So that, that ethos. It's yeah. very, also very London, that kind yeah. of spirit. Yeah. Of designers are DIY doing it, aren't punk. they? Like Matty Boven and um, yeah. Charles Jeffrey and some of those, and the mm. things they've done with Show Studio. And then I you think the designers are into that, yeah. wanting to really kind of push that again. And I really think creative teams are as well. You've got amazing creative hair and makeup teams, yeah. stylists, photographers, Absolutely. a whole new wave of yeah. independent publications, and really experimenting with how we're communicating fashion, which mm. everyone wants to do, but it seems like mm. money people don't want us to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, they might not have much choice because if that's where the focus starts to swing yeah. mm -hmm. and people aren't buying fashion magazines so much. Yeah. I think people are... Yeah, buying different magazines. It might yes, not be so the yeah, typical it's fashion. The it's... Mm. I think it's great that, that was, this kind of has happened because, if anything, it's pushed it kind of totally over the edge into a more collaborative, exciting mm. um, generation of people that are coming up across the spectrum. And I think boundaries are blurring between designers and stylists and general image makers, yeah. which is a really exciting thing that's happening, particularly in London mm -hmm. and New York as well right now. Mm. Yeah, that is exciting. Yeah. And do you think that more people understand a bit more about the process behind the imagery they see and they maybe know that it's controlled like a stylist didn't choose to put a coat a dress a shoes a bag or balenciaga say that they're questioning it a bit more because of the um, rise of things like social media and platforms where people have a voice Potentially, that's quite a good question, but also no. I think there's still a vast majority. I don't know, I think people obviously that work in the industry know what's mm -hmm. going on. But that's why it's been so successful in paid sponsorships and marketing and full looks and all of this because it's a subtle form of advertising. Mm -hmm. I liked the last section. Yes. So that was his, was it dream time? Yeah. yeah. I think the styling is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so do I, so good. actually. It's very good. It looks very new. When you, look, when you take shy. the first look and the final look, it is obviously a huge journey, which is what he wanted yeah. the collection to be. It's yeah. very it's it's clear. It's strained in a way. I think, I, I think it, but maybe that's a good grounding for his mm -hmm. venture in, into the house. This is yeah. the first show, and he's sort of set the tone now for what yeah. he will begin to develop. Well, he's shown an awareness for the reality of how women dress, yeah. what their wardrobe yeah. needs mm. to provide, I think, 
which is interesting. Yeah, that's true. And also, when you are dealing with cl uh, cl private clients, mm. they want something different from mm -hmm. someone else. So if you yeah. have a very restrict, you know, a very clean one message collection, mm. you're then having yeah. to find other things mm. to pull in to give them. Yeah. Mm. Usually, I don't like it when things are really, really different from. You know, I like something that flows more, but somehow it does work. Mm. It feels from the first look to the last look, obviously telling the story through the chapters, but a gradual kind of build of opulence and mm. decadence in the looks. Mm. I love that blue one. Yeah. Uh, and so did we see many of the house signatures? Did we see any lobsters, any constellations? That I think uh, the insects. I think in the embellishments and in the styling, there was this sense yeah, of in the jewelry. high and low. I think was mm -hmm. that like nail or reference to kind of fake nails in that. Yeah. Uh, so I think there was like notions of uh, just that, like high and low thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's the hoop earring with the watch in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like these women are almost characters as well. I think the the cups and the bust uh, shaping and stuff like that is quite um, relevant signature as well mm -hmm. as the house, I think. It's exciting to see where yeah. he'll go from here, though, because there are such like a multitude of looks and references and silhouettes and yeah. will this continue <laughs> to be a chaptered mm. show? Mm -hmm. Or will he go totally kind of yeah. mm, box shoulders and a more modern kind mm. of woman, or will it be very much a fantastical mm -hmm. piece? I think yeah, that snake, that, it, there's an element of kitsch, which I think yeah, uh, yeah. Schiaparelli, you know, that balance, she was really great mm -hmm. at, and I think you can kind of see that here as well. Yeah. It's the subtle really references. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It can tip over and become like quite not nice, but mm -hmm. it's just on that balance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a fine line, isn't it? Yeah. And, and do you think that... Um, so, so, Deborah, if, if a couture client then has, decides that they want, say, a piece, what's the process? Do they have to rush to the showroom and say, I want this piece, are they going to be fighting over them? Um, I think it depends, and it depends on the house. I know that they do usually book the clients in pretty quickly mm. to view the collection. But I think if someone knew they wanted something, they would get back pretty quickly mm -hmm. before someone else had it, mm -hmm. for sure. They must change things a lot, or they must yeah. take the sleeve off, they yeah. to make I it shorter. There's some clients who want it oh, like okay. it is, yeah. but a lot of them want mm. it. They want that, but then they want this or want something different. Mm -hmm. And actually, interestingly, on the sustainable side of things, you are kind of expected to change the pieces if they want, or add to them, or mm. alter them, or change them if they f change shape. So the, the dress, or whatever it is, kind of carries on its life. Well, so after they've worn it, maybe, oh, yeah. for a few years, they'll come back? Yes. And so are there things like kind of generous seam allowances so that changes can be made? Ah, it depends on the piece, though. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't put a generous no. seam allowance in because you won't get the shape. Mm. So you have, to, and you have to always keep any pieces of their fabric in a box with the name on and make mm -hmm. sure you've got it. Yes. Otherwise, you might not be able to get the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And, there's, and there's generally, I was reading, there's generally three fittings. Is that, is that right? Yes, ideally you would have three fittings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes more if it was a very complicated corset or something like that, but generally three fittings. But I've found a lot where you might get one, mm. which is really a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. So. Gosh. <laughs> and so coming up for the rest of the week of Couture, or a few that? days that it is, yeah. are there any ex brands that you're particularly excited about seeing what, what's in store? Um, Gosh, I haven't thought about it that much, if I'm really honest. I've been too busy. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what Chanel do. Yeah, I think Obviously. everyone's yeah. interested there. I love Valentino. Mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. Love Valentino is really... Doing. It was such a yeah. moment last season as well, yeah. with the casting. Those gowns were so beautiful, but it's, it's... And I think there's some newer designers, but I can't remember their names. Mm -hmm. so I'll have to have a look. That sounds terrible. I'm quite interested to see Victor and Rolf after, after the last season. Oh, are they doing it? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. that was a very non-couture couture show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually, it's interesting. The Met Gala is probably the place that we all go to see couture on the red carpet in a way that's 
done with a bit more creativity mm. than just normal red carpet dressing. Are there any other kind of big society events that now you would think of, oh, that's going to be a couture event? Is, is there any interest in that society dressing in a way? Um, is it not Met relevant? Gala is, no. you know, the Met. It's <laughs> just exploded yeah. in and the last few years It's hard to compare well, it to it? kind of anything, but you have smaller events that are more kind of couture people dressing, such as, like, you know, the events of the Serpentine mm -hmm. and um, various more art events. But in terms of, because I work more in music for dressing, you have things like Brits and, you know, Grammys, but that's all paid red carpet. Yeah. Which is sad. <laughs> but I think Valentino is actually kind of striking the right balance of, like, modern couture. Mm -hmm. yeah. For me, it feels... When you see those shows, they feel so relevant. Yes. Yeah. Everything about it, you know, any woman would look beautiful yeah. in those mm. pictures. Looks and easy. desirable. Yes. And it's the ease, isn't yes. it? And, the, yeah. and I think he really does capture that kind of elegance and yeah. with the craftsmanship and yes. everything that it should embody. Mm -hmm. I did, I mean, obviously it's changed now, but I did actually really like what, Mar Martin, what Margiela were doing before Galliano mm -hmm. went mm -hmm. there. I mean, I like what he's doing too, but it's different, but it's I think different. that they were doing something very ahead of their time for couture mm -hmm. when you look at what they were doing. Yeah. Mm. Well, they had also wearable. that high-low yeah. thing down yeah, and well as well. Yeah, and there was the art in there yeah. as well. Mm. So I think that was a very exciting kind of push before everyone was maybe mm. thinking about that. Yeah. And it's interesting, I think to be a couture client, you need to have a real confidence in your own sense of style, don't you? Because yes. it is an investment in something yes. that you're going to wear for a long time. And you need to feel like you're wearing the dress, not the dress is wearing you. And yes, something like Valentino, it does look like it's a dream to wear and it's mm. not in any way weighty. Mm. But actually, those are huge statement pieces that you need to feel completely comfortable in. And you will be, you will be, you know, perfectly fitted. But unless you have the, the confidence to pull it off, it, it will make you feel a bit, not necessarily silly, but probably it will make you feel like it emphasises your, your lack of confidence in a way. Do you find that with your customers, that they have a sense of... They it's all true. have a sense of what they want to wear. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, a lot of them are also couture, um, sorry, Chanel clients. Mm. And I think that's because Chanel was always offered something that's wearable, but, you know, with something a bit different that kind of brings it up to date. And the other thing, because I've seen a few of their pieces, is they were all really light, mm. like not heavy at all. Mm. So, um, but yes, generally they do. Or well, you might get, because obviously a lot of it is weddings yes. at yeah. level. Yeah. Those girls perhaps don't have such as, I don't mean they don't have a sense, but it's a wedding dress, it's something mm -hmm. they haven't chosen before. Some people know what they want. Some people are really looking to you for guidance. And I think a lot of the couture houses, they would have a very sensitive selling team and women around who are very good at making things look fantastic mm -hmm. for you. So it's really providing a service. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose that you, you can shape the body in a way that you can't with ready-to-wear, where it either fits or it doesn't. You can have it altered, but... Well, yes, and that doesn't necessarily mean corsets. It just mm. means looking at proportion. So looking at someone's figure proportionately and deciding where, for example, the skirt should start to suit them mm -hmm. or where the neckline should sit to really make the most of their figure. Mm. So, or changing a sleeve because that puff sleeve is never going to look good on yeah. them. So I suppose it's the ultimate luxury. It is really. Your, yeah. your body reshaped by clothes. Fitting, that is. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, are we into this collection? Do we like yeah, it? I like are we it. Interested yes. to see what I he think continues it looks to do. Really interesting. Mm. It's interesting because they only just relaunched Ready to Wear. So I wonder if he will then continue mm. with Ready to Wear, or if he's just going to focus on couture for now. Mm. I suppose only time will tell. But. It's Did he do the ready-to-wear? No, it was the previous creative yeah. director. Presumably they, the creative director will do everything, won't he? Because mm -hmm. otherwise yeah. they're not going to have a, a homogenised look. Yeah. No, I know, but as in will they continue? Because they've did two seasons of ready-to-wear, so will it continue as a business? Or I will it just be a couture business? When did they do the last ready-to-wear? I think they've done... Uh, 
Two seasons? Two seasons, yeah. yeah one so of which they're doing free. it at the moment? Yeah. Well, I can't see they're going to drop it then if they've mm. just got a new mm. couture, uh, creative director. Yeah, well, it'll be That'll interesting. That'll be really interesting. How yeah, to see how he you translates can, the Yeah, vision. and you can see that it can be translated. Yeah. Mm. And that's part of the excitement, actually, being able to take the ideas and then make them more accessible. Mm. Mm. So I feel like there is a bit of accessibility looking through the looks. There's a lot of entry points yeah. you know, of how, just how far do you want to go into couture. Mm -hmm. Which again, maybe that's all relative to the increase in couture customer and client. Right, okay. Well, I think that's a lovely point to end. Um, thank you for joining me and Thank you. Great, let's have a round of applause for the collection. <laughs>